Warning, this is a demonstration of concept, not an instructional video. Only you are responsible for your own safety. So recently I did a video on making 38 specials out of two books of these safety matches and that included the powder and the primer and today um, that really interested me so I decided to try to refine that method and perfect it a little maybe learn a little bit more about the power of the match head powder um, and how it compares to the regular smokeless powder so I'm making some more here and I'm simply using a razor blade to shave the heads of the matches off and I'm not worrying too much about the cardboard that's going with them because I have an idea on how to get that out. So here's my raw shavings, looks like a little over 16 grains including the cardboard. Here I'm just using a piece of metal rod and rolling it back and forth to pulverize. Okay, we've got a pretty fine powder, cardboard mixed in. Now when I shake it up, you can see the powder and the cardboard like to separate. And I'm thinking this technique will make it pretty simple to refine the powder from the cardboard. Or depending on the size of the mesh, I can use a piece of regular screen door type screen. And there I've got cardboard and powder. It looks like you can kind of fudge it and make the holes in the mesh a little bit smaller you pull them, stretch them out like that. So here I have six matchbooks of semi-refined powder and it seems to give me about 11 grains worth. And here's another batch of six matchbooks and came out almost the same. To add a certain level of accuracy to this test, here I have four pieces of Federal 38 Special Brass and I'm going to be using CCI small pistol primers. My first round will be loaded with five grains of Unique. Underneath a Lyman 358156, 158 grain lead cast semi wad cutter with a gas check. And for my first matchbook round I'm going to use five grains of matchbook powder. Eh, we'll see where it gets us. Here we are, Ruger SP-101 revolver, two and a quarter inch barrel, same block as I used in the first test. Uh, I just flipped it upside down so the arc will be going in different directions. I've got my round with five grains of Unique in here, I'm going to shoot that first, and then I've got my five grains of match powder, going to shoot that second. Now I'm going to be shooting left handed because I happen to have a leather glove with a hole in the finger. and. Uh, Considering what I'm using here, figured it might be a good idea. Well, there's our first two rounds. The one on the left is the five grains of match head, and the primer is very rounded, um, unlike the one on the right, which is what we would typically see with a more flattened profile. So. Um, given the fact that the match head went about half the speed and we're not seeing signs of pressure, I say we need to kick it up a notch and see what happens. Five grains of match head powder came in about half the speed of the five grains of Unique at 521 feet per second. It entered here and it curved and it came out the side of the block at about 12 and a half inches. Now I'll be shooting six grains of match head powder. Six grains of match powder went all the way through, but the velocity was a lot lower than I expected it to be, and so I'm going to dial it back a notch to 5.5 grains of match powder, just to see what happens. Well, the velocities are consistent. The five and a half grains came in at 549, feet per second, uh, right between 
the 5 and the 6, which were 521 and 573. So I'm thinking my readings are accurate. This is the 5.5 grains, this top one, and it went through and it came out the back side. And just for the heck of it, I put a block of wood here so that I could see, you know, if it had much energy when it left the block. And it did. It indented itself right into the piece of wood. And it threw the piece of wood with a significant amount of force, probably landed about 10 feet away. The fact that it can go through 16 inches of ballistic gel and still have the energy to do this, I'd say that five and a half to six grains of match head powder gives a reasonable amount of performance. One other interesting thing, I've got this gel sitting on a piece of black foam. The sun is coming right down into it and this outer edge here is melting. The foam itself is clocking in at about 60 degrees, which is about the temperature right now. Uh, the foam over here in the light, 108 degrees, and down underneath where it's melting, 100 and over 200 degrees. So that's something I need to look out for in the future. And just to note, the part of the block I was shooting through is still coming in in the 60 degree mark. Well, here's our results. Um, I think it's pretty conclusive here. We can see that with Unique we were getting good uh, velocities, but then with the match book powder equivalent amounts and more than the Unique, we never exceeded 600 feet per second. Back here, our first test in the other video with 4.1 grains only 365 feet per second, and it got stuck 11 inches into the ballistic gel. The five grains, it went 11 and a half or 12 and a half inches into the gel, but it curved and it came out the side of the block at the 12 and a half inch mark. Five and a half grains passed through, six grains also passed through all 16 inches of the ballistic gel. So the ballistic gel is a good test and it proves that these rounds that are improvised using nothing more than safety matchbooks like you can pick up for free at most convenience stores will produce an effective round. Now gathering the powder from these matchbooks is very tedious. It's not something that I would sit around and do to save money. Um, but if you're in a pinch, if times are tough, if there's no other option, you can make ammo using the things that you find around in everyday life. I made a little chart. Let's take a closer look at that. Here we can see that the match head powder on our first test at 4.1 grains coming up to 6 grains really tapered off in its performance. I will be doing some experimenting with rifle rounds, but obviously here, with a two and a quarter inch barrel, more than six grains isn't going to get me any further. Here and here, the, prim the primers were pretty much rounded uh, and curved. Here we started to see a little bit of flattening, and then here the primer was more like you would see in a conventional round. Over here you can see our unique at 4.1 grains and then at 5 grains shows a significant performance increase in between those two marks. So again, while the match heads are effective, they're not ideal by any means. And this isn't where I'm going to stop with the matchbook and other improvised powders, so stay tuned. We're going to push this a little further. And with that being said, I'm going to go clean this gun because the match head powder is corrosive. 